The day is the 28th of June, 2018. The sun is high in the sky over Bantry Bay, County Cork. As is the passion of its locals, who are gathered together in opposition against the corporate intrusion into their Bantry Bay. We are terrified that this mechanical extraction, if it goes ahead, could kill our bay. So let me break it down for you. Bantry Bay is an area of outstanding beauty. The bay is also home to thousands of acres of native kelp seaweed. This kelp forest is a house and home to much sea life in the area. It is a nesting ground for many species, and is where life begins for much marine life in the area. This is an opportunity for us to make a very clear statement that we cannot continue in the same direction that we have concerning our planet. Uh, harvesting kelp that is not renewable, not sustainable, is simply a non-starter. Kelp seaweed has been harvested manually by local fishermen in the area for centuries. It is very much a part of Irish culture and our heritage. So what is the problem here, you may ask? In short, the issue lies with corporate mechanical harvesting. The locals who oppose this method of industrial seaweed harvesting argue that mechanical harvesting is invasive unsustainable and will inevitably lead to the annihilation of Bantry's ecosystem. Not to mention the death of a cultural occupation that has been maintained by fishermen in the area for generations. A scientific research company based in Tralee County Kerry was granted a license by the Irish government to industrially extract almost 2,000 acres of native kelp in Bantry Bay. According to the locals, no public consultation took place. The license was not advertised adequately. And the license was issued with no requirement for an environmental impact assessment. Why was the Department of Housing involved in granting the license? What has it to do with housing? Surely they should be building houses for homeless people and not giving out licenses for kelp harvesting. Why was the Department of Marine not involved? Why was there no uh, public uh, discussion about this? Why was there no environmental impact statement? Bio Atlantis um, applied for a license back in 2009 as a traditional harvesting application. Um, it slipped through the cracks and suddenly turned into a mechanical harvesting license and it also was granted to a company that didn't exist until 2014. That's when the license was granted. So there's a lot of paperwork missing and there's a lot of due diligence missing. The government were asleep, they granted the license and they shouldn't have because they haven't really studied the bay. Um, they've done a baseline study which is really very, very poor. Um, it suits the kelp uh, and what is in the kelp but it doesn't suit anything else that lives in the kelp. It's not actually about the developer, it's not actually about what he's doing because all these rules and all these regulations were set by the Department of Housing, by you know the minister responsible, by the government and fair dues to BioAtlantis, all they have done is everything, that, like they've done everything that was asked of them, they have you know ticked all the boxes, they, are, they haven't tried to you know bend the rules in any way, shape or form, it's just the rules are just... Yeah. Yeah. Ludicrous. The biggest problem is the government are asleep, the planners are asleep, and the planners that are granted this license don't understand marine biodiversity. Right. So. An ecosystem is always very fragile. If you come in and do something which is as uh, indiscriminate as the extraction of kelp, it's not really harvesting because that implies that it is something that is, you know, very uh, monitored and it's, uh, it's 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 very well done. But here we are going to have a machine coming in that's going to indiscriminately extract uh, from the bay. What this is going to do, and both ourselves and the developer agree that the seaweed that is cut, the kelp that is cut, will never regrow. Because um, you have the, the whole fast, you have a stipe, and then you have the blades, the fronds. And if you cut the fronds, it'll regrow. If you cut the stipe at all, it, it won't, it can't. And this machine is just going to go along at 25 centimeters or as close to the bottom as it can, suck it all up, 
most of the stipes by their own admission are 50 to 70 centimeters so that's somewhere in that region and he's going down there it won't regrow he's hoping that the the, the stuff that's left will repopulate by spores but then you bring sargassum in it's an invasive species of kelp we found it just down it's, there it's, at the other it's, cave. It's yeah. probably all over the place and it's much faster growing. It takes over. It, it's like the rhododendron of the sea. It does not have the same, it can't keep the same amount of life. Nothing lives on it, nothing feeds in it. It's an invasive species. It grows faster. If you take out the native slow growing stuff, this stuff, and he says the native invasive species will always win. They know they tried this in Norway and it failed. We've already seen examples of this on the planet. In many ways, like we feel very aggrieved the way the government has been treating us, but they've treated Bioatlantis just as badly in many ways. They seem to be, frankly, screwing everybody over. Um, in Mr. English to wake up and smell the coffee. Um, he's on about climate change and there's thousands being spent, hundreds of thousands being spent on, you know, um, an environment, environmental impact study for Ireland in um, 2016, it was formulated. And everything that's going to go on our bay as an experiment is going to totally unfound all that so um, the big problem with doing what they're doing and how they're doing it is it's totally covert and um, it's an old style application the analysis of it hasn't really happened and um, to, to state to us that there, there was you know the, the local people were involved in it it was a tiny ad like a death notice in the southern star that's not collaboration that's not how government should work and the government are condoning this application so the government really got to stand up and admit they made a mistake Minister English has got to do it. He shouldn't have granted permission to proceed with harvesting. And um, the planners are negligent in their approach to this. And, um, you know, all over Europe, people are trying to protect uh, marine biodiversity. And here we are carrying out an experiment in Bantry Bay that's going to destroy the bay, you know. I just think that West Cork's under attack, and we came here because of the landscape and the beauty. And it's not just the kelp, it's the wind farms as well. And it's just destroying the landscape. And it's just so beautiful, and we feel really passionate about it. There is a place, I mean, seaweed is a growing, kelp is a growing industry. I mean, to be, make sense, to, to start right, rather than to trash what's there. That's the thing. Right. Yeah. And actually, be used here, like, it's really nice. Have you ever had deep fried kelp? Like, if you, if you dry a piece of kelp, especially the sugar kelp, you know, the kind of lighter one, and uh, you deep fry sugar kelp, it puffs up like a poppadam. It could become like a, you know, more famous the Bantry Bay mussels. Uh, I'm going to quote uh, Gandhi when he said, there is enough for everybody's uh, need, but not enough for everybody's greed. And I think the problem lies in, in the licensing system we have here, which seems to be more uh, developer based uh, than based on the needs of the community. It was clear from speaking with the folks at Bantry Bay's Protect Our Native Kelp Forest that the movement is not just about preventing unsustainable methods of corporate mechanical harvesting within Bantry Bay. It is about the fact that the decision to grant this license lay with the Department of Housing. This is yet another example of the gross mismanagement and, frankly, the government's simple disregard for our coastlines, our native ecosystems and our heritage. If you would like to know more about this cause, or if you would like to make a donation to help the team to fight the good fight, please visit BantryBayKelpForest.com.